This is the first part of a video series in which we'll show you workflows for remote collaboration in video production. Let's look at the first workflow, a collaborative editorial process between an editor and a director. The editor in our story, Jane, collaborates with her colleague Rick, the director of a five-minute corporate video. Jane is what is nowadays called a shredditor. She shoots and edits. Rick is the director. That means he decides how to tell the story that Jane craftfully edits. Jane and Rick both work from home and don't have a great internet connection, so they need to be careful with the bandwidth. They both have a Dropbox account and create a shared folder for their project. Now Rick needs access to the material that Jane has shot to review it, but that's a lot of data. She filmed a few hours at bit rates of over 100 megabit, some of it even 4K ProRes at 600 megabit, and there's simply no way to transfer that over their internet connection. Jane has the footage already organized in a meaningful folder structure, and she has added some notes and markers for Rick, making him aware of good takes, unexpected or non-obvious events in the footage, or simply things she thinks are cool. So what Jane does is to create a bunch of small proxies for Rick to do the editorial work. She uses a custom transcoding preset that does a number of things. It creates a 720p H.264 proxy at 5 megabit, which is more than good enough for editorial work, automatically applies LUTs for log footage, and adds a burn-in time code in case she has to share the footage with someone who doesn't have a tool like Kino that displays correct time code. She selects the entire footage folder in drill-down mode, sets the output directory to the Dropbox folder, and selects the option to recreate the folder structure at the destination. This starts a large batch operation and Dropbox already starts transferring the files as they come in while others are still transcoded. Once this is done, Rick and Jane both have this folder structure in their shared Dropbox folder. Note that all the metadata Jane has added to the master files like ratings, tags or markers is automatically transferred to the proxies. Now on the other side, Rick goes through the footage using drill down and, as you can see here, all the metadata added in Kino by Jane is just there. It was synced with the Dropbox folder. So Rick does his job, setting ratings, adding notes and markers to clips, thus preparing the edit for Jane. Whenever he changes or adds metadata, these changes are reflected on Jane's side in her Dropbox folder almost immediately, as the metadata that needs to be transferred is contained in very small files that can be synced by Dropbox very quickly. Once he's finished, Jane selects all the proxy files in the Dropbox folder, selects copy, and then selects the corresponding files in the footage folder where the master files are, and applies the metadata to the master files using paste metadata. Now everything is in place and Jane can send all the material that Rick rated as usable to Premiere Pro. Note that Jane doesn't even have to deal with the complexities of a proxy workflow at the editing level. and has all the remarks by Rick as descriptions or markers in the editing project. You can see that all metadata is now available in Premiere Pro. Markers, subclips, ratings, and comments. This is the perfect start for her editing project. Note that she could also use Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or Avid Media Composer using a very similar workflow. She also generates a well-arranged shot list using Kino's Excel export because it gives her a good overview and she finds that very helpful when planning the edit.
Once she's done with the edit, she exports a low bitrate version to the Dropbox folder, which Rick can review and annotate using markers and Kino. The markers are automatically transferred back to her via Dropbox. She can now go through Rick's feedback one by one and finish the edit. Rick is old school and Jane couldn't convince him to use Frame.io for that, which would be the much better app for this last step. By the way, you can also use the Excel export for sending over feedback if you are not working on shared storage, but just transfer the file via WeTransfer, Signiant or FTP. This is only one of many ways in which Kino can help with remote collaboration, and we will look at more of those in the following videos in this series, including Kino's Frame.io integration. Please leave your comments, subscribe to this channel, and visit us on our website or on social media.